The first thing we need to do before upgrading the detector is upload the program configuration to make sure that we capture all of the data on the way the detector is set up and then we're able to then um, look at that program, transfer it over to a new VEP program and install that back into the new detector. So you will need to do this by using a HLI and an appropriate serial port connector to do this. Okay, the first thing is to open the trap door, just like that. You'll find inside there'll be the programming port. You can take your HLI cable and plug it in. And when that's plugged in, you can go to your laptop and retrieve the configuration. So once you have the configuration from the detector, you can simply unplug and now we're ready to power down. So locate the power supply and turn the detector off of the power supply. Now we're ready to start disassembling the detector from the wall. So I like to take the trap door out. This makes it a little bit easier to work with. And using my small screwdriver, I'll open up the pips, show the screws underneath, and then slowly remove all four screws. Once we've got the detector door open, we can see what we're dealing with in the, in the way of cabling. cabling. We've got two circuits connected. We've got uh, our power cable, which we can simply unplug from here and remove from the knockout. And we've also got the relay connected. We can also remove this from the detector. Okay, so we've got our wiring away from the detector now. And the only thing is we've got physical pipes now. Uh, which we need to remove before we unmount the detector. So the first one I'll take, I'll take the exhaust port, port out. Could be an exhaust port, could be um, a cable entry over here or here, or in this case down here. So then we need to lift up the uh, inlet pipes. Just gently raise them up if possible so that they still show the position but the detector is, is removed. You can at this point take a pencil and mark a line on the wall behind one of the exhaust ports. So I'll take this pencil here, marking dead centre where the port is, make a mark on the wall like that and then when I remove the detector I know where pipe number two is going to be central. So the next job is to remove the detector from the wall. This one's on a bracket and there is one securing screw inside here. So I'll take that screw out. Installers normally put this in because it gives the detector a bit more stability. Once with that removed, this detector is mounted on a bracket so gently Prise it up like that, and you'll see that there's a bracket on the wall. So this cross will be a point of reference. This is the new bracket that we're going to use, and it's going to be positioned in such a way that it will be on the wall there. The bolt pattern is different. But we're going to be able to line it up and I'll show you how we do that. First we take the old bracket off the wall. Then we unpack our new bracket from the plastic. You'll see that this bracket has got three main securing points. And I'm not sure if you can see on the camera but the arrowheads are marked for where the pipes are, 
and also where the electrical conduits enter. So we're using pipe number two and three, and I've made a mark on the wall for pipe number two. So I'll make that top centre there with a mark of the texture. Okay, so with the ruler and my texture, I've made a mark at the top of the bracket there, and that mark is going to line up with that mark there. Okay? So we line that up here with that mark and we check the level Then we use our texture to mark the holes there, there and there. Okay, so we remove the bracket. Then we can start screwing it in. The arrows are lining up with our pipes, our electrical conduit will be lining up here. So we bring our new detector and important to note that these go to these grooves here. So we might just want to give us a little bit more room with the pipes, push the pipes out of the way and then we get our detector and make sure that everything's in place, we put our detector on the bracket. So that's it, the detector is secure on the bracket, now we need to open the door. So we open the door like that. So now everything's mounted on the wall, without a securing screw in place, the detector's vulnerable to move. So we need to put this screw in, on the chassis here. Now that that screw's in place, the detector is much more secure, it won't come off the bracket. So we've also got to now fit our pipes, and to do that we've got to open up our covers off our manifold. So we just take a flat bladed screwdriver, and gently tease that one off. And that one off. Now we can fit the pipes into the manifold. One, two. Okay, so those pipes are securely into the manifold now. Then what remains is our wiring. So we have our relay wiring into this knockout here, which is the second one across, same as the last detector. And that will go back into the same plug, fire one, and then our power cable. And now our cabling's in and secure. We also need to put our exhaust port back in as well. So our exhaust port go underneath. You can see now how secure the detector is that we put that locking screw in. All that's left is to power the detector up and then load the program. So we power the unit up and the unit will take 30 seconds to boot up. And while that's getting ready we can get our lead ready. It's a new type of lead, it's just a USB cable. We open up the door, we've got uh, network lights are on, so we've got no network communications faults, and we just plug the cable in. And this side goes to the computer. Then we can send our configuration to the detector, normalise for the airflow. Remove the cable, 
close the door, lock the door in, it's locked, 